cared, quite honestly. He certainly not, did not care about us and our crew there. He really didn't. I mean, he had so much pressure on him already, just um, having our crew there. In some ways, it was kind of nice because, you know, he got to know our, D our DP, Charles Miller, really well. And, um, you know, we would interview him after every loss, essentially. And, um, you know, it was just like, oh, here you guys are again. But it was, I, I think, if anything, we, you know, we became friends, and so it was, was more of a comfort. I was going to say, the only thing I think that he, you know, there were some quality starts at, at, in the back half of that, and I think he'd want those fully acknowledged, um, but it was hard because there are moments when he had a great game in Chicago, but they still lost, for example. And those are the tough moments afterwards when he doesn't feel like saying a lot in a post-game interview. I just also want to acknowledge that Tony Maserati wrote um, his, auto, his biography. No, what would you call it? Is it his biography? His memoir. Uh, his memoir. Good way to put it. What, what is the name of the book? Knuckler? Knuckler. 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 Yeah, that's how we found Tony, thank God. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, we read Tony's book when we knew we were going to do this. C Chris, growing up as a Red Sox fan, knew the whole history. And I live with a Boston Red Sox fan. And so all my kids, even though we live in New York City, are all Red Sox fans. So I, I have lived through it. But we had to read your book on the plane to Florida when we first met Tim. We were like cramming in all the knowledge. So thank you. I mean, we did wrestle with it, how much to put in about the mechanics of it. Um, but do you want to talk at all about writing the treatment and what you were thinking? Well, you know, I didn't come to it necessarily with a narrative, and that's exactly what they were able to do in a way that I just, I really don't have the skills for. But um, there's just so much interesting information about the knuckleball. There's so much statistics. There's so much math. There's so much science. There actually is one uh, scientific paper that was written in 1972 on the knuckleball. There's a guy at University of Illinois right now who has a different theory and he's gonna shake everything up when he writes that article. Um, so, so I struggled with it and I think the way that we sort of in collaboration towards the end in thinking about it, we started to talk a lot about the knuckleball as the third character and I think that was really helpful in like trying to figure out, you know, um, what aspects of it needed to be told. And you know, one of the things that we kind of went around and around about was, this, was the science and how much of it to get into. And uh, it'll be on the DVD, but um, there, that, was, that was a fascinating part for me in terms of like collaborating with filmmakers because I don't have experience as a filmmaker, is kind of like figuring out what is absolutely imperative to the narrative. And um, in this case, the science was sort of um, the way that they did it with the numbers, I thought was really effective. 